Hey everybody, William Wallace here, William Wallace for Louisiana. And today I was with uh, state rep, Paul Hollis. You guys keep hearing about how much I wanna connect people with our elected officials. Well, Paul Hollis has given me some time today to get to know him. And we're gonna talk a little bit about his district, what's important to him, how he got here. Because again, I really feel that the best way to get more people involved in our elective process is to be able to get to know the people who are representing us. And today I'm bringing on Paul Hollis, thank you very much for being here. My pleasure. Anybody with a name like William Wallace, uh, it's, a, it's a privilege to be on your show. I I'm appreciate that. Spending a few minutes with you. Well, the only thing I, won't, I don't have on today is I have my face painted blue. I don't have my kilt on, so <laughs> I, I spared you that. <laughs> right, Braveheart. That was a good movie. It was, it was a great movie. Yes, it's it's a, it's like instant name recognition for me because every, everywhere I go, yep. you know, people will say, you know, oh, William How Wallace. How do I know that name? It's yeah. a name to reckon with. There, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> And they'll say, and they'll, they'll say, well, and then of course you get the question is, but have you ever heard people ask you that before? And I'll always say, no, I've never heard it before. Not once. Not once, yeah. not even, not once, but like three times a day. So, yeah. Well, Paul, tell us a little bit about yourself. How'd you, how'd you get, how'd you choose uh, the Mandeville office? Well, you have any like, history you want to share with people? Well, sure. I uh, actually grew up, uh, born in Jefferson Parish. Um, after Katrina, uh, with young kids, we moved to the North Shore. Um, I love living on the North Shore. Yeah. Uh, in 2011, just after reapportionment, a new district opened up in St. Tammany Parish. Um, I ran for that office. I won. It wasn't a terribly heated campaign. In fact, I really liked the uh, the young gentleman that ran against me. And so sometimes I think that politics is getting a little too combative. And so when yeah. I see races like that, it, it, it kind of upsets me. And I'm just so pleased that in the races that I've been involved in, it, it's never gotten to that point. But right. I get it. People want to win so bad. And but sometimes people do things that I just believe are a little bit uh, beyond the pale. And uh, yeah. it's unfortunate when you see that happen because it, it makes good people a little bit hesitant to go into uh, to public service. But uh, I had grown up watching my dad who served in the state Senate for 26 years uh, wow. in Jefferson Parish. And so, you know, somebody asked me, they said, do you think that had an impact? I said, you know what? I had so much love and respect for my dad. If, if he were a librarian or a, a contract, whatever right. it is, yeah. I probably would have wanted to do that. I'm kind of an introverted uh, guy, but yet in politics, um, you, you kind of got to put yourself out there. Yeah. And uh, these last eight years, I would tell you that uh, um, it's been phenomenal. You know, I've really enjoyed it. And I hope that we can get our state on a, a path to prosperity. Right. Um, I, I look at the numbers that we're at right now and they're of great concern. And so we need good, I think, conservative leaders to, to mm -hmm. step up and uh, bring Louisiana forward so that we don't see our children continue to move out of uh, Louisiana. I've got a 16 year old and a six year old. And oh, so wow. I'm vested in this state. I wanna do yeah. everything I can to you know, create an environment for them so that they don't have to uh, you know, have a relationship with me over the telephone. I want them to be close by. You know, ideally yeah. they live in Louisiana on the North Shore. Yeah, exactly. Just down the street from me. Not in my house, <laughs> yeah. but just down the street from me, you know. But I got years to go because uh, my daughter's a couple of years away from going to college and then my son who's only six. So you would keep her in the state. In Louisiana, yeah, absolutely. She actually is big into uh, theater and I don't know where she gets that from because I couldn't sing and dance and <laughs> play a musical instrument, but she is phenomenal. Yeah. And it wouldn't shock me if she uh, moved to New York City and, and performed on Broadway. But in the oh, absence wow. of that, uh, it's my hope that she'll stay in Louisiana. But I got to support her. Do we have a Jefferson so. Parish Performing Arts And building. she's performed there all the time. <laughs> and just so you know, they named the theater for my dad. And so, oh, really? um, yeah, the Senator Ken Hollis um, Theater. And so when I go there and watch my daughter on that stage, yeah. it's kind of, somebody once told me, they said, you know that tears of happiness and sadness under a microscope look entirely different? And I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not I haven't heard that one before. But my yeah. point, though, is this: my wife looked at me the first time I was in that theater watching my daughter perform, and it was kind of like, man, I was I was weepy because it was yeah. named for my dad, and there my daughter was on that stage, and you know she knew it was the Center yeah. Ken Hollis Theater, and it was just a, a very moving thing. And I love uh, the Jefferson Performing Arts and, and Dennis and all those guys, and uh, that theater. I, I get it. it cost a little more than they a lot more than they thought, but it is a wonderful facility, and I think it's going to serve Jefferson Parish well for uh, many decades. And I think. I think once it gets, great for all of us, yeah. I think once it gets rolling, I mean, like, it's still, even though it's a couple years old, it's still kind of new 
you know, it's not used as much as it could be is what right. I'm trying to get to. Right, right. It'll be yeah. a cornerstone in time, but people got to get accustomed to, to going there. But they've had a lot of really amazing performances there. And the ones that I've been to, actually, even during the Saints game, because yeah. I say to my daughter, it may not be a full auditorium tonight or today because, you know, the Saints are playing. I go and I'm like, the parking lot. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, yeah. wow, <laughs> you're competing against the, the right. New Orleans Saints, and yet people are in there. And, and you look at all these couple us. Saints players behind, sitting next to you. Know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, what's going on there? But no. I've probably been to 20 performances there and they're all just awesome. The Sound of Music was just a couple of weeks ago and my daughter performed in that and it was it was phenomenal. Now, the, and I was there during the Saints game and I didn't mind at all. So <laughs> I caught up on the game when I left. Yeah, you, had, you had your phone, you know, looking at the score. No, no, no. <laughs> you turn your phone on during something like that, they give you the evil eye. So they want no reflective lights and turn your phones off. But uh, but during intermission, yeah, I was, uh, you know, you got me. Well, I'm, glad they named, I'm, I'm glad they named the stage after the, the uh, after your after We your were father. thrilled. People don't really realize how good of a job your dad did you know, here in the state, you know, uh, how good he did for the, for the district. Well, and it's reason he was there for 20 years. That's exactly right. And the right. Jefferson, Pal uh, Jefferson Parish Council was the one that afforded, uh, you know, that, that honor. And uh, so every time I go there, I, I just have a really good time. And half the time, my daughter's on the stage herself performing. So it's a kind of a multifaceted uh, emotional experience right. for me, but always, you know, a great deal of joy. She actually had her Sweet 16 uh, party there. They rent the theater out. And, oh, I didn't uh, know that. We had a wonderful time. Yeah, in the That's atrium, cute. which is uh, just lovely. And it's not terribly expensive and uh it, it was really lovely and she shared it with another uh, one of her friends so it was it was great well where does your district cover where does your what are the boundaries kind of of your district you that's so how they created this new district for you they do you know they did not um, for you but <laughs> right no, they, with just for you <laughs> it's, it's an unusual district in that it's all the unincorporated areas there's no um you know i i, I serve lacombe um, mm -hmm. in its entirety, but I also have a portion of Covington, of Vita Springs, Pearl River, um, Slidell, and Mandeville, which is where I live. Um, but it doesn't have any of the inner cities of each one of these areas. It's all the unincorporated areas of each one of those um, cities that I serve. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I wonder why I they did that. I live outside the city of Mandeville. And yeah. So, but I wasn't uh, a friend of mine, actually, Adrian Bruno. I called him up. I think you know Adrian. Yeah, I, I said, Adrian. Adrian, I'm looking at these new district boundaries. I mean, this is, you know, what, yeah. eight years ago, uh, nine years ago. And he said, no, I, I think you're in the new district. And I was like, well, this is phenomenal if that's the case. But, you know, it's hard to get on that image close enough to, to know. But I was like, yeah, wow, this is this is wonderful. Because yeah. I don't know that I would have wanted to run against an incumbent, uh, you know, during that time. All the legislators over there were really great. Um, and so with that new seat back in 2011, I came on board. And uh, at the time, our St. Tammany delegation was a very seasoned um, with term limits now. Right. You know, there's only me. It's hard for me to believe this, but I've been there eight years. And from the North Shore, even on the state Senate side, right. um, nobody's been there uh, eight years, four years. And we've got Mark Wright and Mary that have been there two years and one year. And other than that, everybody's uh, brand new. And we, so we interviewed, you, you blink your eyes and you're the, the senior member, you know. So. I, I interviewed Beth Mizell just a, just a uh, couple yep, weeks ago. Yep, phenomenal you know, there. Yep, yep. She, she, her, I guess her Senate district probably butts up to your... Yeah, yeah uh, and then Sharon Hewitt, uh, but I'm actually in, um, you know, Jack Donahue's uh, state senate seat, okay. and uh, that that race uh, actually just concluded recently, and that was definitely a uh, a spirited race. But I enjoy the house. You've got 105 members and uh, a great deal of personalities right. there, and uh, I really think that you get to know the the parliamentary procedure there, and uh, it's just uh, it, it really is an incredible experience and. I think everybody goes there with a good heart to, to do right. right by the people. And, uh, you know, the session begins in the spring, and we got a lot of issues that we need to address. I wish that we didn't yeah. have thousands of bills uh, to consider. I wish it were a smaller amount and so we could be focused. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of challenges that we've got to do. Well, you brought with. something up a little while ago that I, that I want to bring up. You talked about the divisiveness. You know, are you, are you tired of the, the fighting amongst, you know, people running against each other? We're probably going to have a lot of that divisiveness in this next session, uh, I mean, even though we have a conservative and a major a majority Republican mm -hmm. House and Senate, are we going to have that same divisiveness between our governor and our and our and our legislature? You think? I think uh, yes, um, but I mean, we're we're all adults, and so I don't think it's going to get out of hand. But I mean, we're going to have a spirited debates. So I think it's uh, very unusual uh, to have a governor that I don't 
considered to be uh, moderate. I, I think he's, you know, a pretty, pretty leftist uh, governor uh, in a state that despite the election results, I think we are, you know, a cherry red, you know, bright red state. So, um, so there's still hope. You still think we're a red state then? Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. Um, and I think that the legislative seats, um, both the House and the Senate with near um, super majorities, um, in both, um, I would tell you that I, I do think that we are a very conservative state. And so you've got, you know, a conservative House, conservative Senate, and you've got a, a liberal governor. And so it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And uh, it's my hope that we aren't just going to fight everything that the governor wants to, you know, do. Uh, I hope that we find middle ground. Some people think that's uh, a bad word. I, I personally uh, don't. I think that's one of the reasons we go to the yeah. Capitol and we see what we can all live with. And I, li I like that because I think all too often in our society, you know, we, we get tied up on ideologies. You know, and I've always said this on, on many of my shows is that, you know, we can adhere to our ideologies and let those guide us, mm -hmm. you know, in the, in the right direction, you know, but ultimately we can't let our ideologies stop us. You know, we got to yeah. find, you know, middle ground, like you said, become kind of a dirty, dirty word for people. Yeah. But I think you can find middle ground by finding things you have in common without giving up your ideologies. And it might be fewer things, but those fewer things get, you know, chip away at right. getting things done for the people in our state. Well, and I'll give you a hypothetical. If you were, say, a Democrat, I would look for things that maybe we could agree on. Just because yeah. you're a Democrat and you have an idea, because it came from you, right. I don't want to assume it's a very bad idea. I yeah. want to you know, consider everybody's opinion. But we do have spirited debates. And you know, I am concerned about some of the initiatives that the governor intends to bring forward, but I'm confident that the legislature, um, you know, we're, we're, we're going to do what we can to, to fight those initiatives that uh, we think are uh, not good for our state. And I'm pleased that at least on the legislative side in the House and the Senate, we're very conservative. And so I don't see, you know, anything major um, that he is going to want to do uh, getting through that process. Now, um, the flip side to that is there's major things that we'd like to do, and I'll give you an example. Um, well, now State Senator-elect Kirk Talbot uh, brought a wonderful bill that I think is going to bring down insurance rates. I okay. mean, in other states throughout the country, their insurance rates can be half of what we pay here yeah, in Louisiana. We, yeah, we, know what, we know this debate well. We do. And, yeah. you know, I'm going to be driving to Baton Rouge tomorrow, and during that drive, I'll probably come across 50 uh, you know, billboards and, you know, we are just a haven for uh, trial attorneys right. and we need to do major reforms. And I was pleased to vote for the bill that Kirk had uh, sponsored last year. Um, I hope that that's an initiative that we can get through. But the concern that I've got is, okay, Paul, there's a very conservative Senate, a very conservative House, but this piece of legislation is going to be put on the governor's desk. And my hunch is, is just like it was last year, he'll say, no, this isn't going forward. Last year it was killed uh, in the Senate, but right. my thought is, is we're going to get through the House and the Senate, and then the governor's going to say thanks, but no thanks. And so in as much as I go with the spirit of compromise, I hope that the governor looks at the legislation that we're able to bring forward, because we are a very uh, bright red conservative uh, legislature. I hope he's open-minded. Do you think there's initiatives. a way, do you think with that issue that there's a way to maybe find any kind of middle ground that that maybe will help it get through you know with, with the governor is there is there something that maybe if if, if uh, the whole thing doesn't get through is there a smaller small something smaller that can get through that he can agree on you think i'm afraid that um you know even if it was the most um well i'll give you an example the bill in order to get into the form to get through the house had to be tailored to where everybody in that house. I mean, it didn't pass unanimously, uh, right. but it was, you know, a, a large number of people that supported that bill. And my concern is, is just on its face that it's going to be rejected. Right. And the reason for that is, I mean, we've seen a lot of these trial lawyers give huge amounts of money to the campaign of uh, Governor John Bell Edwards. And mm -hmm. so I think he's going to be protective of them. And I think that's one of the major components as to why our insurance rates are so high. I mean, right. you've seen some of the ads and, you know, it's not the size of the wreck. It's the size, I mean, things that are yeah. just, just you know, they make you scratch your head. Right. And it's like, really, we're going to, we're going to do that. And, and it almost uh, it breeds the idea that if you get an accident, it's, it's time to get paid. And that's, right. that's very unfortunate. Now, I, I understand there are legitimate lawsuits and, and claims and lawyers, you know, have a place to, you know, facilitate that process. But when you see uh, abuses and you see just the haven that we have created in Louisiana, 
I hope that we can put some changes on that. And I hope that the governor is open-minded to mm -hmm. whatever this legislature brings. I like Kirk Talbot's bill. I hope in its current form in which it got rejected by the state Senate, uh, we can you know, usher it through again this time. Um, and I hope the governor reconsiders, but I'm not optimistic about yeah. that. But as a legislature, we're gonna do what we can. And we're expected to do you know, a lot of yeah. conservative initiatives because we were overwhelmingly elected by conservative it's, people throughout the state. It's gonna be one of, uh, I guess one of many issues that are, There's so are, many issues. Are, are, do, you, do you have any any issue that you're most passionate about, or is it, is, is the insurance the most passionate? No, or, um, I mean I serve on the uh, the commerce committee. Um, I'm the vice chairman of commerce. Also sit on the, the retirement committee and the insurance committee. But there's so many different uh, things that we look at. And that's what I uh, advise new members. It's like, you know, you are going to uh, enjoy this process, but in a lot of ways, it's like a, a fire hydrant and you're wanting to get a sip of water and the, the water is just coming out so fast. <laughs> and, and don't expect to be an expert on everything under the sun. I mean, you could be Einstein and, and walk in there. You're not going to have... Uh, the wisdom. So you got to be quick to, to boil things down. Uh, you got to listen to the testimony. I mean, right. the process is not flawed. I love the process of being uh, a legislator. You have the committees and everybody, you know, speaks their case. And in a lot of ways, I tell people it's almost like you're a, you know, on jury duty, right. except instead of deciding a person's innocent or guilt, you're considering policy. Is it good or is it bad right and so that's that's what we do uh at that capital but no to answer your question i have an interest in a, in a broad swatch of things but my vision for louisiana is to create an environment for the growth of business and i think right. that stimulates a lot of things if we grow businesses we can reduce taxes their jobs absolutely for children, uh, per capita income needs to, uh, to to grow i think we need to make major improvements to education and there's just so many things that uh you know, we, we can do better. And, and I hope that this new energized body, I mean, we've got, you know, well over 40 new house members, which that's wow. shocking. And a body is. is 105. That's major turnover. Right. Like term limits, you know, creates an environment Almost where- Almost half the legislature, yeah. That's exactly right. But there was a time where people have been there 25, 30 years. And right. so term limits have been a great thing. And people come there energized and, you know, but I advise them, you know, you gotta kind of take it all in for a little right. while and then learn. Cause you know, once you start saying things that are just, you know, like odd, yeah. then, then you kind of lose a little bit of, uh, of faith. So just go there and listen and learn. But yeah. most of the new members, I find that they're very informed. They followed the debate for a long period of time and, and they're ready to you know do what they can to serve the people that, that put them there. Yeah, most of the people who run, I would say, are people that have already been you know listening and paying attention to the process. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've obviously are aware of what's going on. And then because you know I'm aware of what's going on with some of these people that you're, you're spending the the older ones are not, not age wise, right? But the ones who've been there a while seem to take these new people under their wings and and kind of you know give them a you know some lessons before it even happens. That's exactly right, and and you'd never want to reject that because I mean it is it's it's complicated, but again the process is really wonderful. And one of the great things about the Louisiana legislature is the public is allowed to come out and to you know to to, to give their opinions on things. Yeah. And there are many a times where they bring particular insight. Um, experts are allowed to give their testimony, and representative senators present their bills. You ask any question that you want, and uh, you know it's an exhaustive process. It's like six yeah. when we were. 12, 13 years old, you know, um, but to actually participate and bring in a bill through the process, um, it's 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 quite an experience. Yeah. And, um, you know, my only wish is that we didn't have two, 3,000 bills because I wish that we would, you know, be more focused on, on things. Right now, though, new members are, um, you know, trying to figure out which committees they uh, would like to serve on. Right. And usually you'd like to see them serve on committees that suit their background and their, mm -hmm. their skill set. Have some experience. That's at. exactly right. And so, um, but we're going to go into organizational session in mid-January, and then the spring session begins uh, in March. And so with the legislature where there's so many new people, it, it's going to be interesting. But I think there's a, a lot of very passionate, a lot of very conservative uh, people. And our state is at a you know peculiar time because it is very odd to have you know a Democrat uh, governor in the position uh, where the legislature is almost you know, entirely the opposite. Almost there's like a, like, a, like a lame duck and a lame duck almost kind of thing. I don't want to say that way, but yeah. you know, the legislature, in other words, the legislature have a really hard time getting things you know, past that are very, very conservative. Yeah. And the governor is going to have a hard time getting most, a lot of his, 
his you know pet projects. Or, yes, we don't want to be at an yeah. absolute stalemate. We've got yeah. to get some policy. Exactly. Through. I just think so. Lame duck is probably the bad, oh, oh, not a great way to say it, but it, like, I mean it's a fair yeah, term. Yeah, Describe the, the governor. I don't yeah. know about the legislature, <laughs> but no. Uh, but I've got you know this one four year term to go, and uh, I'm excited to uh, to serve. And it's just uh, unusual to me that after only eight years, wow, I'm you know the, the senior member. But that's one of the things about uh, term limits. Well, being know? senior member, you know, is, are there any any. Uh, you know, uh, guesses on speaker this this uh, this term. You know, it's funny that you ask that because yeah. uh, you know we're only what not 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 even two months away from right. that decision being made. A lot of times, yeah. it's made even before we go into uh, organizational session. There's a lot of members that are vying for that very important post. And um, we're going to see, you know, your, your guess is as good as mine. Okay. Um, four years ago, we actually did a uh, right. public vote, and it was uh, exciting for those that watched. It was stressful that those that were uh, yeah. voting. But I wouldn't be surprised if uh, we have a public vote, um, you know, in January. But it's just hard to say. But it's hard to predict who's going to win. But, again, yeah. I can assure you the people that are running, they're very solid individuals. And good. I know all of them because it's typically people that have been there a while, um, and they have a good vision for our state. And, uh, you know, I'm excited about that. Yeah, that, I, I like to see that because that's a key person to bring the issues between the governor and the legislature, from what I understand. That's exactly right. And they're the ones that are, you know, in the negotiations and all that. So you need to have someone that's uh, skilled in strategy and, you know, very knowledgeable and, and seasoned. But, you know, we're in an environment where after eight years, you're you're the seasoned guy. And, you know, 20 years ago, you'd have to be there for 20 years in order to be the seasoned guy. You know, right. I mean, if you go back to the 80s and the 90s and they've been like, somebody's been here for eight years and they're vying for speaker. I mean, you've even got some first termers that have been there for four years and they're vying for speaker and I don't fault them for that they're yeah. aggressive they're ambitious and, and good for them but my point is is you know with term limits eight years and you know it's time for you to either be a speaker or a, a senior member and then after that you're done I mean a lot of people go yeah. to the senate to the side senate but side, right. I had no interest in running for the state senate seat I'm just happy to you know have yeah. another term in the uh, the house and uh, I'm excited for January and also uh, for the spring session in March and it's the extended session which right. is 85 days and some people camp out in Baton Rouge the entire time, but um, you I, commute, I, you'll, I you commute, commute every yeah. single day, and I decompress with my legislative aid as I drive back and forth. And yeah. if your phone number's programmed on my phone, I'll probably call you early mornings, and people are like, you're on your way to Baton Rouge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, instead of yeah. talking for like three yeah. minutes, it's like, I want to talk for 20 minutes. Yeah, exactly. You, know? you get more time out of me this time. That's though. exactly right. But it's an hour and 40 minutes, and people might think, what? You're you're there in Mandeville, but traffic um, is just horrendous. And uh Going there, coming back is not terrible because we usually don't end until eight thirty, nine o'clock at night. Right. So the traffic coming home is not bad, but going to Baton Rouge even at six thirty a.m. it's it's it's. So a you lot. basically just come home just to sleep. That's it. Yep. And there are times where we actually adjourn at midnight, and you know we we have a procedure to where uh, then we have to go back into session. You know, a few minutes later, and we do the prayer, we do the pledge of allegiance, and you know, it's peculiar, huh? A lot, a lot of people don't realize uh, realize some of the things you, you pointed out. They don't realize the life that you guys live during that legislative session. You know, they also uh, don't realize that if there's something that you're keeping up with, and that's part of the reason why I'm doing these these, these interviews is to point these things out because if you really get involved and really pay attention to what's going on in the legislative session, you could actually go there and, and, and testify and speak either for the bill or against the bill in the committee me meetings. And I did that, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. on, on some things this last session, yeah. you know, that I felt were important for the district in which I live in. Right. You know, and, uh, and then a lot of people don't realize that, that you're going back and forth you know, on you know, from midnight to going back at six o'clock in the morning. But don't they have apartments there for some of the people? They do, uh, but the apartments are like uh, 150 square feet, and believe it or not, a lot of them share them. And I don't, I don't know, as a grown man, that would be <laughs> very uncomfortable uh, for me. And so I, I'd rather just you don't want to be in your 150 square foot apartment. And look at this yeah. guy getting dressed and then have to see him in the session, right? <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, I just like my own home, the comfort of my own bed. Yeah. But, but the lesson I have learned is always keep an extra, uh, you know, set of clothes and, and yeah. an adopt kit in my car on the occasion that we're there past midnight. And, uh, but me, even when we were there past midnight, I drove home and drove back the, the very next morning, but it would be a lot more convenient to, to get a hotel or what have yeah. you. But you know, we do. You don't uh, get paid enough to, <laughs> to have well, hotels Well, people talk time. about the per diems, like we're anxious to get yeah. per diems, but it's like, yeah, it's a lot of work. And, and I told somebody, yeah, the pay of a legislator is 16,800. And they said, 
oh, that's a month. And I said, no, 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 that, that's a year. That's a year, I, It yeah. ends up being in the mid-30s because for every day you're in session, you do get a, a per diem, yeah. and that's to cover your uh, cost of your uh, the apartment or, or hotel stay or, or, or whatever. But, uh, yeah, most members make like $35,000 annually. And Which is why they go home so they can keep the per diem to make a little bit more money you know, instead of having to pay it for the hotel room. Yeah, well, gas and everything. Yes, yeah. I mean, there's there's a reason that it's that way. But yeah, exactly. you know, my thing is, is years ago they thought about raising, and I don't think they should uh, do that. I mean, I think yeah. it's in keeping with the um, states of our size and you know the commitment. Yeah. But I mean, some members, believe it or not, you know, this occupies 80, 90 percent of their time, and uh, you know it can it can absorb you in, you know, and it's uh, time away from family, but it's 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 an honor to serve, and that people have faith in you to cast a vote on their behalf. I mean, state representatives serve approximately 45,000 people. Uh, state senators serve approximately 115,000 people. Right. And so you got to keep that in mind and you got to be, you know, focused and, and, and ready to do the hard work. But the hard work sometimes is making decisions where, you know, maybe 45% of the people are unhappy with you and 55% are happy with you. Yeah. But never is everybody happy with exactly there's no way to make everybody happy that's you know just one of the things and so in some ways it's it's thankless but it is also a, a great honor to serve and i just wish and i like to get young people excited right. about politics because yeah. if i hadn't seen my dad in politics i don't know that i'd ever wanted to do it but we need you know new fresh blood new ideas uh new energy and yeah. uh anything that we can do to to, to encourage people to, to get into it but when i see negative campaigns i say that discourages people and, yeah. and i understand that because who wants to go through a, a brutal race like right. that and it's very expensive but, you get beaten you know, up and you come out with a little bit of ground meat <laughs> yes. So it's almost like you really don't even win, you know, because uh, after a, a bruising campaign, it's, it's just not a whole lot of fun. But again, fortunately, I've been spared and never had to endure that or put that on another individual because fortunately I'm friends with, you know, folks that I've run against before in the past. Yeah. So it's all good. It's a good way to keep it involved. And you've brought that up before. What I like some of the things that you've said there, you know, is you've talked about serving, you know, it's about service. You know, you've talked about, you know, getting the public involved. And you've talked about, you know, that, that we're all tired of, of politics becoming being you know, such a blood sport. You know, we know why it is. We know we can accept, you know, the, the reasons for that, you know, but this is why I'm doing this. And this is why I was bringing you on is to be able to get more people involved because the more we're aware of, of our, our elected officials, you know, on a personal level, like the like we've done here, the more we're aware of what they, what they go through, and what they do, you know, and the, the more informed we are. And the better informed we are, the more involved we can be. And that's why I brought you on today. Well, I appreciate you. And I want to thank you very much for well, your time. And I'll invite you and your entire audience to come to Baton Rouge during the legislative session. Yeah. Come anytime and tour the facility, but yeah. to see government, you know, in, in, in progress. I, I think you, you know, enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Most aspects. I've, 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 seen, I've, seen, I've seen it a couple of times. I'm going to be seeing a lot of it oh, this good. next time. And I certainly thank you very much for the time. And I appreciate it. My pleasure. Everybody else, please share the video. Remember, you know, Representative Paul Hollis on the uh, North Shore. And, uh, you know, we had some interviews recently. Take a look at them and see the really good people that we've got in office and learn more about them. Thank you all very much and stay tuned, please.